G'day and welcome to David Joshua Ford Live. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at getting started with Companion. I've got a bunch of people on the channel who are new here and they're asking questions about how do I get started with Companion and what is it and what can I use Companion for with my live streaming to improve my quality of production. So on today's show, we're gonna take a look at this new Mac that I've bought. Um, it's just a Mac M2 Air and I'm going to plug a Stream Deck into it. So we've got this one. So using that, we can control the whole um, stream. So the way that I run this studio is I have a Stream Deck over here and using that, I can from here control the entire studio. So I've got a Sennheiser 416 microphone into a mixer, and then that is going into an ATEM 2ME Constellation, into a web presenter, and then over there flicking lights, you'll see uh, a ATEM um, ISO, uh, sorry, ATEM Extreme SDI ISO recording this and um, what I use to do the streaming as well as a backup. And so all of that is being controlled by this uh, Stream Deck here. So this is usually how I run my show. If I just wanna do some basic switching or if I want to recall particular shots, I've got a whole bunch of macros that can control multiple things at once you saw like those camera movements or even this little round circle that I've got here. We can bring all this up through different button controls um, and all of that is centralized into an app called Companion. And a Companion is essentially something that runs on a computer. And then I've got the Stream Deck that I can plug into that. So um, let's take a look and we're gonna get started by downloading Companion. And to do that, we need to go to the website um, bitfocus.io. So I'm gonna open up my Mac here and we're gonna zoom in here. All right, so let's take a look, bitfocus.io and you will sign in and it'll ask you for login details. So you'll need to actually sign in there. Um, at the moment, the products include Companion Satellite, Companion Pi, so you can run this on a Raspberry Pi. But today we're just gonna take a look at Companion. And if we jump through to download, you can see there's a couple of options here. At the time of recording, the one to get is the 2.4.1. This beta version three is probably still a couple of months away. I'm hoping sort of mid 2023 that that version three will move into a stable release. But for the moment, we're gonna grab this stable release. If you click on here, you can get your platform. So either Linux, Apple Silicon, uh, Intel Mac or a Windows version. Because I'm running this on the Air, I'm gonna grab the Silicon version and it will download that. All right, so once we've downloaded that, we're gonna show that in the Finder. Mine's still going, so I did download one earlier but I haven't installed it on this computer because I kind of wanted a, a fresh take um, because I've got a lot of uh, things that I take for granted in my setup that I've just set up for a while. So uh, I'm gonna drag this into your applications folder and then in our applications folder, I recommend just like dragging this into the dock so you can find this easily. And then we're going to start this up. If it doesn't pop up with this window, then it will be up here in the taskbar up here and where you can hide or show the window. Now, to get it going, we have a couple of interfaces. We have all interfaces, the local one on 127, or else the uh, wireless one. If I did have an Ethernet connection plugged in here, then that's where that would show up as well. But um, these are the ones that I've got. I'm gonna use the wireless connection because it means that actually with other computers on my network, they can access the this server, which is running from this little Mac Air, and then it's running more broadly that other computers can access this as well. All right, I'm gonna change the port number to 8000, and then we're gonna launch the GUI. The wizard will pop up and we can go next. I'm gonna use the Stream Deck hardware natively, so we're not using Elgato's software. We're gonna run it straight from Companion. I don't actually have X keys, so I'm gonna turn that off, and I don't have a loop deck connected either. Um, next, we're gonna turn on OSC. I just like that on because there's a couple of my profiles that make use of that, um, but you may not need it by default. And then we don't need an admin GUI password. So we'll go next and apply and finish. Okay, so now we are in Companion and you can see on the side here, we've got a panel that is gonna have help with getting started. If you wanna donate some money to the project, it is open source, it's free. So that's where you can go to donate and give back um, the Slack channel 
Facebook for bugs and features that you might um, need help with. And then we've got some web or mobile button versions here. Um, so this is sort of an infinite scroll. I don't particularly like this one as much as this one up here, which is the emulator. So this is going to look exactly like the Stream Deck. And instead of a hardware one, you can actually use this virtually. So if you don't have a Stream Deck, then you can just get started straight away. Um, but also, even in a network environment, it can be handy because you can pull this up on an iPad and use this in a virtual um, setting. All right. So next up, let's take a look across. I'm just going to close this one down here so we have a bit more space to work with. Along the tabs along the top, we are going to have um, the connections page, buttons, and that has variables and importing and exporting uh, profiles. Surfaces is where the Stream Deck will show up. Triggers, if you want to automate any actions. And then under the settings page, um, this is normally checked when you start. I like to uncheck the show top bar on each button because it just gives a little more space for the button design. So I would normally turn that off and then I would have uh, the OSC turned on like that. So now we are pretty ready to go and we can take a look at adding in connections. So under the uh, connections tab, that is where you're gonna be able to add pieces of gear in that you might have. So there's, there's hundreds of pieces of gear and you can have a look through from audio things to AV, um, graphics, computer control. The one that I'm gonna add in because I have some in my setup here is an ATEM. So Blackmagic uh, Design ATEM, this is gonna do the ATEM Mini Pro, the Extreme, Constellation, all of the ATEM family. So that has popped that one in there under the label ATEM. And then we go under Target IP, you will see it will find the ATEMs that are on the network. Now you need to make sure you're on the same network. Um, so it's the 192.168.8, that's kind of my uh, subnet. And then the last number is gonna be the actual device. So these first three numbers match. And then 240 is my ATEM Constellation, and then my SCI Extreme is 161. So let's go ahead and we are going to connect the Constellation because it's my main switcher. And just go save, and that is, we can see is connected and is all okay. Um, also in here, we might want to add VLC just for some video playback. And now I don't have that installed or connected here, so I am going to disable that one for the moment. And the other one that I quite like is H2R here to record, and that is some graphics that we've got going on. Um, so I'm gonna save that, but disable it for the moment. All right, let's jump over to the surfaces page, and we're gonna start by adding in some surfaces. So if I uh, pull back a bit here, you can see that I have my Stream Deck, and that's just uh, USB connected here, and I'm gonna plug this one in so that we can get this one up and running. Um, make sure you have the USB plugged in the right way. If it doesn't turn on, then chances are you are actually um, running the USB port around uh, the wrong way, which can happen with USB-C. So now that I have the Stream Deck plugged in, I'm gonna go to uh, Rescan, and that will show up here with your serial number, and you can see I have some buttons that have shown up here. And with Companion, you can scroll all the way through 99 pages. So there's there's almost 100 pages that you can use to create um, a whole bunch of different layouts. And then you can jump between those pages. By default, um, if you hit this button here, it's going to take you to page one. And then you can go up through uh, page, you know, 13, whatever. Hit that and it's going to go back to page one. So it is very much um, by default going just incrementally in page numbers. So I prefer to sort of bounce around a bit, um, which is where I might erase this first button and we can call this button like home. And we're gonna change the size to 18 and maybe we'll change the background to gray so that we can see here. And then maybe on page two, I will also, uh, actually, sorry, I'll go back to page one. I can go command C to copy and I'm going to paste that to here. And we're gonna have home. Um, and then under press actions, I'm going to go to browse. And this is where under internal, I can come down to uh, set surface with SN to page. And it's gonna add this one in, done. And so I'm just gonna choose the current surface, whatever um, surface presses this button to a particular page. And this one is gonna go to home, which is page one. Let's go back to page one. Let's call it home. 
just so that that makes sense. Again, I'm going to delete some of these buttons because I don't particularly need them. Delete that one, delete that one. And um, page two can be our show page. And so this one I'm going to copy and paste. So now I have the same color and formatting. So I'm going to call this one show page. Maybe we'll change the background to be a little bit lighter to show that we've selected that one. And again, we're going to, um, but I might delete the action here. So nothing happens when I press it. And then when I press the, sh the home button, it's going to go to home. And when I click on the home button, we don't want anything. But when we are going to copy and paste this one, we're going to call this one show. And this one's going to be the set surface with serial number to page two. And then this home button, we're going to make this one a bit lighter so we can see. Okay. So now what we have is we can have a show page of selected page two and a home page of selected page one. And we can build out um, our, our different pages here to jump around. Next, let's look at populating page two, our show page, with some switching commands. So if we come over to the presets, we can go into Blackmagic. And there's a whole bunch of presets that we can pull in here. The main ones we might want to pull in are the preview. So we can bring in our cameras. So cameras A, B, and C. And um, we're going to put in... And we also can also do black and color and color bars, all that kind of stuff. And program, we're going to do cameras A, B, and C. And if we go back, then we might need a preview program um, transitions for mix effect one. Let's put an auto button here and we'll put a, um, I don't think they have a cut button by default, but we can make that. And there's so much more here you can do here with super source and uh, upstream keys and all that kind of stuff. But I will save that for another day. Just want to give you an idea of how um, presets work and for whatever application you have then that's something where you can often find that under the presets tab and you're going to be able to bring in um, something that's sort of already built to give you a bit of a kickstart. All right, so let's go here. I'm going to do a regular button and type cut. Let's make the same size, uh, which I think was 18 as the other one. And I like the color being um, black here and a white background just to kind of match what's on the ATEM. Auto, again, let's go background white and color black. Um, and then under here, this is where we're going to go to our Browse button again. Under our ATEM module, we have a whole bunch of commands. And this is where you can use this to sort of scroll through and see what you've got. And we've got the, uh, what have we got? Perform auto transition is the one that we put in by a, pre by a preset. And then the perform cut transition, we're going to add that one. So we're done and this is just going to cut. So now when I um, put something into preview, like my other shot, I can do an auto transition and it will fade between the two shots. So I have my little upstream key here and auto transition back and forth like that. So that's kind of a good demonstration of just how quickly you can get up and running with a few of these things. Um, if you then want to save what you've done, this is where you can come over to this import export tab and you can go export and it will just dump out a profile. And this in your show and find it will land in your downloads like this. And what I have is if you go to my website, I'm just going to zoom in a bit here so we can see. If you go to davidjoshrafor.com under live. Um, companion profiles. I've got a bunch of uh, more complex ones that I've built for sale. And then I've got some free profiles. So if you click here, then you'll pull up these free one page switches. So you can control the ATEM Mini Pro and the ATEM Mini Extreme on these profiles. And they've also got um, sort of inbuilt some stuff for the uh, H2R graphics and um, uh, slides and what was the other one uh, VLC playback if you want like video playback um, and there's a, a regular 15 button one and then some 32 button ones for the Stream Deck XL for the Mini and the Pro 
Um, so this is where if you were to download that, you would get a file that looks like this one, DJF trial 32 extreme, whatever. Um, so if we want to import that, we can go back to our profile here and we can uh, import. So I'm going to come back to my downloads. I'm going to select the file and it's going to load it up here. It's just a one page. Um, so I can either, uh, well, I can only import one page because it's one page, but if it was like a fuller configuration, you could just wipe your whole profile and um, start that one over. So let's go to page three over here. We've got an empty page and then we've got this import configuration and this is where we can figure what we want it to match to. So the ATEM um, connection name here is XATEM in this profile. So we're going to want to match it to the ATEM. And then the Vicrio doesn't exist, so we're just going to leave that to create a new connection. And then the H2R graphics exists, so we're just going to match it to that one. And then VLC exists, so we're going to match it to that. Otherwise, you would um, double up on your modules, not the end of the world, but if you've already built out some stuff and you want it to be controlling the same device, you want to link it to the same device. So now we're just going to go import to page three, and it's going to wipe that one over the top. And if you come into connections, you can see we've added in this Vicrio uh, module in here that we hadn't installed before. Um, and now we've got all of these uh, buttons. If I hold down shift, this is where it will highlight red and you can, you can test your um, switching. Um, with this one, I've got, uh, let me see. So this is putting everything in the preview row. And again, I can do an auto transition across to my other screen and I can auto transition back. Um, it's got this key button here. So um, what I can do now is a uh, single tap for that and it's going to take off the upstream key that in this little circle here. So the next time that we hit auto, it's going to fade across and I don't have that. So that's kind of how that key works. There's a bunch of those sort of things in there. Um, let's cut back to here. So you can control your um, media player, some slides, some uh, H2R graphics just to get you connected and so that you um, get a sense of how the module works. And then the main thing in here is the ATEM, which is not quite hooked up here yet in terms of all the labeling. Um, so hopefully that gives you an idea of how to um, get started in Companion. Um, and like I said, if you want to grab the, uh, the profile, then that is a, a free download. And you can get that from uh, my website. DavidJoshuaFord.com is where you can go to grab that free profile and just kind of kickstart your companion journey. But that should give you a bit of an idea of what it takes to use companion, how you would install that on a machine. Um, for example, what we were using here was a computer running on Wi-Fi with a Stream Deck. So it's completely running off battery and Wi-Fi, nothing connected. So very handy if you want to move around the studio and control a whole lot of gear like we showed before. All right, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed that. And I will see you back next Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Thanks.